a reading from St John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learnt that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Thank you, Tom. In this Gospel reading, there are several characters that catch my attention. Martha, concerned about the practicalities she served. Mary, concerned to show how much she honoured Jesus, she loved. Judas was aggrieved and his self-interest was expressed in his concern about what will not go into the common purse. And the chief priests, anxious, feeling sidelined, angry and were concerned about themselves. Each of these had concerns that motivated the responses we see in this reading. But I'd like to look at just two of the characters, Judas and Mary. On the face of it, Judas appeared to be concerned about the poor and who would have benefit, benefited from the money from the sale of the perfume. Mary, on the other hand, was generous and devoted, whilst he was greedy. Mary's lavish devotion stand in, stands in stark contrast to Judas's stinginess. Was this lavish love too disturbing for Judas to watch? In Mary we see the actions of true discipleship and love, whilst we will see later on that in contrast Judas's love proved false. Foot washing was a normal part of hospitality for guests when they arrived at a house, but it was unusual to wash feet during the meal itself and using costly perfume to do it and using the hair as a kind of towel. It was obviously overwhelming emotion that led Mary to do this. A woman letting her hair down in public was unusual and it was the mark of a woman with loose morals. It would be the equivalent today of a woman showing more of her body than is appropriate to the occasion. This was a most shameful thing to do and it must have been quite disturbing for all those present in the room. Her actions would definitely have caused a reaction from those around her. Mary's focus on Jesus was important, giving him attention, foreshadowing the anointing of his body after death. Jesus must have recognised the significance of her actions. 
Let's look at the contrast between the two of the characters in the story, Judas and Mary. In this story, we see Mary being committed to Jesus, wanting to honour him, recognising something special about him. We also see Judas, who is concerned ostensibly about money and wanting to look after the poor. Quite rightly, Mary's motives are questioned here. Why would a woman like her behave in this way? Why would she use such costly perfume? To me, the answer seems clear. Her love for Jesus and her commitment to him. This outrageous suggestion of washing Jesus' feet and wiping them with her hair was the only way that she could express her deep love and devotion to Jesus. Was it a sense of foreboding that triggered this deep and heartfelt response? Two very different reactions. Devotion from Mary, hypocrisy from Judas. I wonder which of these two you identify with. The shameless Mary who worships Jesus with everything she's got and risking the comments and judgments of others about her motives, but knowing that what she is doing demonstrates something of her devotion and love to Jesus? Are you like Mary, risking the sneers of others as you remain committed to following Jesus? If we take what Jesus said at face value for a moment, without the hypocrisy, are you inclined to be cautious and prudent like Judas, trying to look after the little resources that you have and wanting to provide for the needs of others? In a sense, it doesn't really matter who you identify with because what really matters is that what you do or say is done with integrity and with love for Jesus as your motivation. And I'll finish with Psalm 36, verses 5 to 11. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Do not let the foot of the arrogant tread on me, or the hand of the wicked drive me away.